All right, buckle up, everybody, because today we are diving deep into the Intel Arc B580 GPU. A fascinating piece of tech, really. It's causing quite a stir, and we're going to unpack why. We've got articles, reviews, the whole nine yards. All about its performance, its value, how it stacks up. But first, let's make sure we're all on the same page. What exactly is a GPU? I mean, some folks might be hearing that and going, huh. Well, think of it like this. The GPU, or graphics processing unit, it's the artist of your computer. The artist? Yeah, it takes all that data, the instructions, and transforms it all into the images you see on your screen. So basically, it's responsible for everything we see. Pretty much. The smoothness of a game, the crispness of a 4K video, that's your GPU hard at work. So for our listeners who are gamers, this is a big deal, right? A better GPU means smoother gameplay, higher resolutions, all those fancy visual effects. Absolutely. It's all about that immersive experience. But it's not just for gaming, is it? No, not at all. Video editing, 3D modeling, even things like AI are tapping into the power of GPUs. So anytime you've got a task that's visually demanding, you need a good GPU. That's the key. And what's interesting about the B580 is that it's designed to deliver that power without breaking the bank. Right. And speaking of breaking the bank, the B580 comes in at a shocking $249. For that level of performance, it's practically unheard of. Exactly. It packs a punch with 12 GB of memory, which... Mwah. That's a lot. Think about it. Huge, detailed textures in games, editing multiple streams of 4K video without lag. The B580 can handle it. That's what I'm talking about. Real world impact. But here's where things get even more interesting. The B580 is built on Intel's new Battle Mage design. A big leap forward in efficiency. So it's not just about raw power anymore. It's about working smarter. They basically redesigned the engine of the GPU, squeezing more power out of every watt. And here's the kicker. The B580 actually has fewer cores than some older Intel GPUs. But it's faster. Wait, fewer cores but faster? How does that work? Think of it like this. Imagine you have a massive pile of laundry to fold. Instead of having one person doing it all, the B580 is like having a team of robots, each folding 16 shirts at once. Okay, I'm starting to get it. So it's more about specialized cores working in parallel mm -hmm. rather than just brute force. Exactly. It's all about efficiency. Plus, the B580 has a larger cache. Which is like... what? Think of it as a super fast memory bank right on the GPU itself. It keeps frequently used data close at hand, so there's no waiting around for slower system memory. Okay, starting to see why this Battle Mage design is such a game changer. Mm. But no tech is perfect, right? Of course not. There are trade-offs with everything. So what are some of the downsides we should be aware of with the B580? Well, one thing to consider is its energy efficiency. Ah, right. Everyone's thinking about power consumption these days. While Intel has made strides, it still draws more power than some competitors, particularly NVIDIA. So that means potentially higher electricity bills. Not ideal. It depends on your priorities. If you're hyper-focused on energy savings, there might be better options. Right. Context is everything. And there have been reports of some driver issues. Drivers. For folks who aren't tech savvy, what does that even mean? Drivers are like the software that allows your GPU to talk to the rest of your system. Think of it like a translator. Gotcha. And sometimes those drivers can have little hiccups, glitches, incompatibility issues, things like that. So potential higher energy bills, some occasional driver hiccups. Not exactly deal breakers, but definitely things to consider. It all comes down to what you're looking for in a GPU and what your priorities are. For many, the B580's performance and price outweigh these drawbacks. Right, but before we dive deeper into that performance, let's take a quick look at the competition. Especially because AMD has some new GPUs on the horizon. So how does the B580 stack up in this ever-changing landscape? That's a great question, and we'll definitely explore that in more detail. Because at the end of the day, our listeners want to know, is the B580 a good guy? Is it worth the hype? We'll dig into all that and more. But first, let's take a step back and really appreciate what the B580 brings to the table. It's challenging the status quo. It's a budget-friendly powerhouse that delivers on performance. And even with its minor drawbacks, that value proposition is hard to ignore. It's a compelling piece of tech, no doubt about it. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. We still need to dive into those benchmarks, really dissect its performance. And beyond that, we need to think bigger. What does the B580 tell us about the future of GPUs? What innovations are just around the corner? Those are some excellent questions. And we'll tackle them head on in the next part of our deep dive. So stick around, folks. Things are about to get really interesting. All right, let's get down to brass tacks. Those benchmarks, 
How does the B580 actually perform? Benchmarks, they're like standardized tests for GPUs. Let us compare apples to apples. So we can see how it stacks up against the competition in real world scenarios. Exactly. And the B580, it punches above its weight class, especially at that price point. Okay, give me the juicy details. What kind of performance are we talking? Well, let's take a game like Cyberpunk 2077, notoriously demanding. Oh yeah, that'll bring a system to its knees. But the B580, it can deliver smooth frame rates at 1080p, even with the graphic settings cranked up. So for our listeners who might not be super techie, what does that mean in terms of what they see on their screen? They'd see a smooth, fluid gameplay experience, no stuttering, no lag. The game world renders beautifully all the details, all those effects. Okay, so Cyberpunk at 1080p, check. What about other games? It's also very capable at 1440p, which is even more demanding. Right, pushing those pixels. In most modern games, you're going to get a very playable experience, even at those higher settings. So whether you're a casual gamer or a hardcore enthusiast, the B580 seems to have you covered. That's a versatile card, that's for sure. But it's not just about gaming, right? We talked about the B580's potential for creative tasks. Absolutely. It shines in video editing, 3D rendering. In benchmarks, it often matches GPUs that cost way more. Let's break that down a bit. Someone who's editing videos for YouTube, creating 3D models. How would they benefit from the B580? Imagine editing a 4K video multiple layers, effects, transitions. The B580 would let you scrub through that timeline smoothly, no lag, no dropped frames. Rendering times would be much faster. So for our budding filmmakers, 3D artists out there, the B580 could be a real time saver. Efficiency is key, right? And the B580 also leverages technologies like PCI 4.0 and resizable Bay RR. You're gonna have to refresh my memory on those. Think of PCI 4.0 as a wider highway for data. Data moves between the GPU and the rest of the system faster, which means smoother performance. Gotcha. And resizable Bay R. That lets the CPU access all of the GPU's memory at once. No more small chumps. Yeah. Can really boost performance in certain applications. So they're basically turbocharging the B580's performance. You got it. But let's be real. Benchmarks and tech specs are one thing. What about those real-world drawbacks? Power consumption, driver issues. Important points to consider. Minor annoyances or potential deal breakers. Power consumption is definitely something to think about, especially if you're concerned about energy costs. Or the environment. Right. The B580 does draw more power compared to some rivals. It's a trade-off. It's like having a sports car with a powerful engine. <laughs> you're going to be guzzling gas. Exactly. As for driver issues, it's a mixed bag. Intel has been putting in the work to improve driver stability. Which is kind They've made progress. But you might still see reports of glitches, compatibility problems. So something to keep in mind, what advice would you give our listeners who might be worried about those driver issues? Stay updated. Intel releases driver updates regularly, fixes bugs, improves performance. Make sure you have the latest drivers and you should be golden. Solid advice. Always good to keep things updated. Keeps everything running smoothly. Stepping back a bit. It's important to remember that Intel is still relatively new to the dedicated GPU market. That's a key point. NVIDIA and AMD have been the big dogs for years. So for Intel to come in with a card like the B580, that's making waves. It's shaking things up. Competition is good. It pushes everyone to innovate. To create better products, ultimately benefiting us, the consumers. Yeah, absolutely. The arrival of Intel's ARC GPUs, it's injected some much-needed competition into the market. So even if you're not planning on buying a B580, its very existence is pushing the industry forward. Exactly. And it'll be interesting to see how Intel continues to evolve their GPU technology. Speaking of the future, right, what's next? We've talked about the B580's performance today, but tech moves fast. What's cutting edge now could be obsolete tomorrow. So what features, what innovations might make a GPU truly future-proof? That's the million-dollar question. But before we jump into the realm of speculation, let's recap what we've learned about the B580. We started with those benchmarks, highlighting its ability to handle those demanding games and creative tasks. And we discussed its strength, the battle mage architecture, that 12 GB of memory allows it to handle even those complex workloads. We also talked about its weaknesses, the power consumption, those driver issues, trade-offs to consider. And the importance of staying updated with those drivers. But now, as we look ahead, what innovations will shape the next generation of GPUs? What challenges? Now let's shift gears and talk about what's next for GPUs. We're at a really interesting point right now. Yeah. New technologies are popping up, demand for processing power is going through the roof, and the lines between gaming, creative work, and AI are getting blurry. So 
put on your future predicting hat for a moment. What trends do you think will shape the next generation of GPUs? One thing that's already making a big splash is ray tracing. Ray tracing. Remember when we talked about the B580 and how it delivered that smooth gameplay in Cyberpunk? Yeah. Well, ray tracing takes those visuals to a whole other level of realism. It simulates how light works in the real world, right? Yeah. Making everything look incredibly lifelike. Exactly. But it's also a huge resource hog, even for today's most powerful GPUs. Right. It's really demanding. So future GPUs are going to need even more power and efficiency to handle ray tracing without, you know, melting down. So are we talking about GPUs? that can create virtual worlds okay. that are basically indistinguishable from reality. That's the dream. But it's not just about pretty pictures. AI is going to be a major player too. AI and GPUs. Now that's an interesting combination. How does that work? Think about it. AI algorithms that can tweak a game's graphics settings in real time based on your hardware and preferences. Oh, wow. Or AI that can upscale an image to 4K with amazing detail. We're already seeing these things in some applications, but it's still early days. So GPUs are not only going to get faster, but also smarter. Exactly. And as AI gets more sophisticated, we're going to see even more innovative uses for GPUs. This is all very exciting, but let's be realistic for a moment. Every new technology has its challenges. What kind of hurdles do you see GPU developers facing in the coming years? One of the biggest ones is definitely power consumption. Ah, uh, the age-old problem. As GPUs become more powerful, they also tend to use more energy, which means more heat and bigger electricity bills. Which, as we mentioned, is already a bit of a concern with the B580. Yeah, it's a trade-off. So finding ways to increase performance without dramatically increasing power consumption is crucial. This might involve using new materials, coming up with clever new architectures, even using AI to optimize energy use. It makes sense. Are there any other challenges on the horizon? Keeping up with the never-ending demand for processing power. Right. Games and software are becoming more and more complex, which means they need more computational muscle. Like an arms race, right? Developers push the limits, and GPU makers have to try and keep up. That's a great analogy. So we need constant improvements in GPU performance, whether through architectural innovations, new manufacturing techniques, or even exploring entirely new ways of computing. So we've got these powerful GPUs creating these amazing virtual worlds, AI making them even smarter, and a constant push for more power and efficiency. It sounds like the future of GPUs is going to be quite an adventure. It definitely will be. And it's an adventure we can all be part of, whether we're gamers, creators, or just tech enthusiasts. Mm, well said. So, for our listeners, what's the key takeaway from all of this? What should they be thinking about when it comes to the future of GPUs? The future of GPUs is full of possibilities, but it's a future we can help shape. By staying informed, being curious, asking questions, and embracing your ideas, we can all play a role in guiding the development of these incredible technologies. That's a great point. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive, from the basics of GPUs to the cutting edge of innovation and even glimpsed into the future. We've talked about the Intel Arc B580, its strengths and weaknesses, and how it might change the GPU landscape. We've examined the trends and challenges that will shape the next generation of GPUs. But most importantly, we've encouraged our listeners to join us on this journey of exploration, to be curious, to ask questions, and to embrace the possibilities. And with that, we've reached the end of our deep dive into the world of GPUs. We hope you've enjoyed listening, and we encourage you to keep exploring this fascinating field. Until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.